Hello watch enthusiasts! Now today I'd like to speak about a watch which carries on from a few videos I've produced recently. Because recently I've spoken about quite a lot of dive watches, both in slightly less affordable realms and in some more affordable realms, and today I'd like to speak about something which really does present an incredible option as a very affordable dive watch. And this is the uh, the, the, the rather rather impressive Zelos Swordfish. And it's a watch which has been released and uh, and spoken about quite uh, quite extensively throughout YouTube. But I feel I'd like to give my spin on the watch because it is interesting to be able to talk about this watch and, um, and discuss something which offers specifications you would expect in a, a six or seven hundred pound watch for a price of uh, of under four hundred. Now, before I begin the review, though, I would of course like to give my usual um, disclaimer and and statement that um, I'm not paid to produce uh, positive reviews. If I'm sent a watch and uh, and I don't feel the quality is up to scratch. Um, or indeed up to any sort of standard to recommend to my viewers, I simply send it back. Um, and so I, I do like to, to present this as a, a demonstration of the fact that my reviews are um, to the greatest possible extent impartial, um, and, uh, and so I, I do feel it would, be, it would be unfair, quite frankly, to give a biased review based upon payment for a positive review. Um, and, so, uh, and so I just feel this is something to, to be spoken about before producing a review of this type. But looking at the watch in general, the watch takes an extremely modern form, with a 42mm case, a 48mm lug-to-lug -lug length, and a 13mm thickness. And the case certainly is quite a, a beefy piece. It has this very butch form to it, with uh, very sharp lines and crisp edges that look like something out of a sci-fi movie, as opposed to, to a dive watch. And in fact, I think carries off that sort of uh, crisp, modern aesthetic of a dive watch extremely well. And this is the kind of watch that makes you think, do I actually um, uh, spend, is it actually worthwhile spending any more than the price of this watch? And I think this watch does raise a very good question, which I suppose is the ultimate compliment. But looking at the watch in general, first of all, and the case, one has to appreciate that this watch is designed to, to not look like anything else on the market. But interestingly though, the watch does come with quite a few options in the box. And this particular version is 349 US dollars because it has a, a Seiko movement. But um, if I just put this watch to one side and speak about the, the, the options that come with the watch, I think this provides some context as to just how good value this piece is. Now the strap you see on the watch is, is one of the two options you get out of the box. And this is a Horween strap, which is, uh, which is this wonderfully tight-grained style of, of leather with a wonderful smell, and is also waxed, which means that you get this, this fantastic finish which develops a patina over time. It also is a strap which, which is water-resistant, which is great to know, especially on a dive watch of this type, that you can take this strap underwater, as I in fact have, um, and it hasn't caused any sort of trouble, and the water simply beads off it, which really is fantastic. And of course it is, uh, it is signed with the, uh, the Horween branding, and also with Zelos on the other side. Aside from that though, if I put the watch to one side, one does also receive a metal bracelet, and it's this extremely heavy-duty stainless steel bracelet with a rather interesting clasp, and whilst this bracelet isn't really to my taste in terms of daily wear because of its, its sheer size, I do think for someone who, do, who does enjoy a, a very well-machined and extremely functional bracelet, this could be a, a very real option. And now with most watches around this sort of price tag, one would expect to get quite a simple sort of option um, for the, the box of the watch, but not in this case, because one receives this rather attractive wooden box, which uh, as you can see has been, has been laser cut to give this this Zelos logo. But then if one pops it open um, using the, the hinges on the one side and these magnets, one sees this isn't, at all, this isn't all, because inside that one receives this blue leather watch roll, which is very nicely finished and has this pin buckle style of, of closure, which you can see buckles that way. It then rolls open to reveal this, uh, this rather soft, um, soft interior, in which one receives the warranty card, the watch, and uh, the additional bracelet options. But now I'll put all of these accessories to one side, and speak more directly about the watch, where there certainly is a great deal to speak about. Now aside from the 42mm diameter, there really is a great deal to speak about with this case. It's a very angular design, and as you can see takes no inspiration from any other watch on the market. One sees vertical brushing on the sides of the case, which is extremely fine, and really is the sort of brushing you'd expect on a watch three times the price, um, which is marginally astounding, quite frankly, bearing in mind the, um, the fact that this is a brand which is not as well established as, um, as, as a great deal of others around the same price mark. But aside from that, one also sees angles on the top of the lugs, with this circular brushing, and then polished bevels on the inside of the lugs as well, which are a rather nice touch, with further brushing within there. And one does notice with this piece that it's not actually particularly thick at 13mm, but thanks to these very flat sides, and a, a build which, uh, which is certainly more, more blocky than a lot of watches, it certainly feels its size. If one looks at the other side of the case, the crown is also very interestingly mounted, 
and is a uh, finished is finished in a combination of uh, of circular brushing and bead blasting. And this gives the crown an extremely industrial look, but it has an extremely fine fit into the case, and, and works very, very well with the general design. Then one also has polishing on the top of these crown guards, which appear almost separate from the rest of the case, and give a really glorious aesthetic to the, um, the side of the watch. And I feel this is something which is, is very, very well done by the brand, because they really haven't made this watch look like anything else on the market. It is its own product, but follows very nicely after the, the other products produced by Zelos themselves. And this watch does come in at the bottom of their range, and I think it's worth noting that um, when one talks about this piece, because it is just so well finished. If one turns over the watch, then, it's visible that the, the case back is, is perhaps more simple than a lot. We're simply saying Zelos Swordfish, um, 300 metres, the, uh, the individual serial of the watch, um, because uh, there are 150 of, these, of each of these pieces being made, um, with a, a sapphire crystal and uh, 300 metre water resistance. Then, of course, if one, uh, one tips the watch um, to the side, one sees that the profile of the watch is very much dominated by that bezel. Now, the bezel of the watch is a 120-click bezel and, uh, and rotates extremely soundly between its, uh, its marks and, and lines up perfectly. But there, there really is no play in it either, and it still remains quite stiff after wearing this watch um, for, for a few days to, to really get to, get to terms with it. But it certainly wears very well. Um, in terms of uh, of of not um, uh, not sort of succumbing to what one has with a lot of watches, which is where the uh, the spring tension on the bezel um, tends to wear down over over time, or even in quick uh, in quick um, time. In fact, after acquiring the watch, and I've seen no such problem with this, which which is really great to see. Of course, one does also have the the addition of a ceramic bezel insert, and this is really no uh, no normal ceramic bezel insert for this price range, because it's not simply polished. It's actually deeply engraved and then filled with, with luminova, but is also circular brushed. And so one gets this wonderful graining going around the watch itself and allowing the whole watch to take on a, a wonderful form in the light, as you can see, preventing it from appearing too, uh, too glossy, giving it a more industrial appearance. And the loom of this watch is something which is seen very extensively on that bezel, um, but I'll show you that with the loom shot, which uh, is, will certainly be a, a surprise for some. Then one comes to the crystal, which is this um, this this uh, relatively um, reflection-free flat sapphire crystal, and the crystal is smaller than you might expect in a watch of this size because of this ring and the the bezel, but you still get very significant dial real estate, and, and there's no legibility problem as you can see. But where the uh, the design of the the case is, is particularly curious is in the way it's able to, uh, to 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 wear itself on the on the wrist. And I say that in the sense that the lugs are very short, and so it balances itself very effectively on the top of the wrist, which is not something I would have expected, considering the proportions of the piece in the photos. Now as I turn to speak about the dial, I feel I should point out this is the cobalt blue version, and as such features a slightly different layout and uh, set of features to the, to the other versions in different colours. First of all, this version is of course blue, and has this matted sunburst effect to the dial, which is extremely effective in terms of being a very bright colour when hit by light, but also a very subdued one when, uh, when outside the, the realms of, uh, of direct sunshine. And so one gets this fantastic three-dimensional nature to that surface of the dial, without even counting the fact that this is a sandwich dial. And the fact that this is a sandwich dial helps it in the sense that it allows the, the surface of the dial to, um, to, to sit higher than the loom plots, which sit beneath the dial. And this gives a great deal of a three-dimensional three sort of nature to the dial. But there is more loom on the dial as well, around that, that second track which runs the edge of the dial. And the function of that is just to, to highlight it in the dark, but also allows it to be separate from that blue centre of the dial, and thus makes it more legible in the, uh, the day and the night. But it's the details with this dial that are really fantastic. One sees, for example, if one uh, looks at the surface of the dial that the Zelos logo is applied, whilst otherwise one simply has automatic and 300 metres as text, with coloration chosen very well with 300 metres in red. Then one also has yellow accents in the form of that second hand, which is uh, very modern in its form, but still features a syringe sort of inspiration. And also one has these sunken um, divots, which form the individual seconds on that track around the edge of the dial, which is just a wonderful way of doing it. Then, of course, one has the fact that uh, the hands are extremely well machined. Now, it's difficult to show you in, in, uh, in, in this sort of light, but when hit by, by, by sunshine, one sees the fact they are actually triple faceted. So one gets a central facet, and then uh, blade-like edges. And they're extremely well finished with very, very sharp rims. And as you can see, the hands are extremely closely mounted to the dial, which is a nice touch too. and means there isn't a sort of an extremely high gap between the hands, or between the hands and the crystal. Then one notices the fact that the dial is in many ways quite sparse. Um, in this case, this watch doesn't use a, a Swiss-made movement and doesn't have the date. 
and so one doesn't have any of that sort of text or, uh, or additional features um, on the dial present. But I feel, whilst talking about that, it is worth noting the fact that these watches are available with ETA 2892s as an alternative to the movement in this particular watch. And the movement in this watch is a Seiko NH35, which gives a very sound sort of watchmaking and would be my personal choice if I happened to buy one of these pieces, as a result of the fact that it's, it means that the watch changes price from, uh, from for this version from um, five, uh, $649 to $349. And you do lose the date in that process, which also gives more balance to the dial in my eyes. And the functions of this movement are that it, uh, it runs at uh, 3 hertz, so it does have a slight sort of wobble to the second hand, but nothing too noticeable. It's also hacking and hand winding with a 41 hour power reserve, and so, uh, so as you can see, if one pulls out the crown it halts, and then if one pushes it back in one can hand wind the, the automatic movement. And so this 24 joule movement seems like a very, uh, very appealing option for a watch of this price, because it will be cheaper to service as well than its ETA counterpart, making an altogether more appealing option, at least in my eyes. Um, and for the ETA 2892, you do get a, a somewhat more uh, more advanced movement in terms of uh, of what it can do. It runs at a higher beat rate and is a, a much slimmer movement. But I must say, for the feature set um, this uh, this offers, I would go for the the Seiko movement. Now, aside from the blue version of this watch, there are a variety of different versions which uh, which come in the range. Now, the most uh, simple version, I suppose, would be the blue, which comes um, in at uh, 349 US dollars for this uh, this uh, Seiko powered version. Or 649 for the ETA. Well, then has the black sand version, which is the the vintage inspired piece, which has a um, a grain sort of sand texture, black dial with aged Lubinova and golden hands. And this piece uh, comes in with uh, with similar pricing, in fact, the same pricing as the blue version. And there is also a PVD version of that piece available only with the Seiko movement for 349 US dollars. There is then probably the brightest, the aquamarine version, which comes with a steel bezel instead of this um, this ceramic. And that comes in um, with the, the same sort of pricing as well, um, but does have greyed out loom and a, a very bright style of sunburst dial. And finally, there's the meteorite dial version, which doesn't have a sandwich dial and instead has a, a simple version with applied indices because of the nature of meteorite dials. And that version comes in at uh, 549 US dollars for the Seiko and 849 for the ETA. But I think whichever one you choose, you are getting a lot of watch for your money in terms of the features this watch offers and the general build, which, uh, which really is remarkable, especially with that 120-click bezel, which is a real pleasure to operate and, and lines up extremely well with every marker and moving between each, each, uh, each marker to give you that 120-click that run. And the grip is very good too, which I do think is, um, is great to see, especially bearing in mind that it fits in so well with the design of the watch, bearing in mind the fact that one has this wonderful line between the edge of this, uh, this grip on the bezel and that bevel on the side of the case, which appears to be no coincidence, and gives a real balance to the watch, which appears to be really very, very well thought out, which I do appreciate. Now, an element of this watch to consider is the bracelet, because it comes with this solid style of bracelet, which is 22mm and doesn't taper, so it remains 22mm the full length. And one does also have this offset by these very shallow and rather short links, which means one has very, very high fluidity to the bracelet, so as you can see, it runs very, very smoothly, and, and these are solid links. They're brushed throughout as well to match the styling of the watch, with brushing along the side and along the top. And it has these very narrow um, styles of screw pins, uh, or rather screw links, sorry, which you can, uh, you can remove with a, a very fine screwdriver. And so it is worth noting that you will need a very, very fine screwdriver, and one which is most likely finer than for most bracelets. But once you've sized the bracelet up, it, it really is a wonderful piece. I personally find it too heavy, um, just because of the, the sheer heft of it, as a result of it not tapering. But for those who do enjoy a, a more, more significant and more substantial bracelet, it's a really interesting way to go. And the clasp is a similar story, because one will note that it does feature Zelos branding and is nicely uh, ridged, but it is extremely thick. Um, and so for daily wear, I find that it's just a little bit too much, but features a, a trigger release for the, um, for the bracelet itself to, to open for the deployment, and then you have a ratcheting dive extension, which is a, a nice touch operated by these buttons here. But if I take the watch back into, uh, into, into frame, I'm going to put it on the wrist, just to show you how it wears on my wrist, which is just under 7 inches in circumference. And bearing in mind the fact that this, this watch has a 48mm lug-to-lug length, it's a piece which is, uh, is by no means uh, very long, and thus, as you can see, fits very nicely on the wrist. And it doesn't really sink into the wrist as a result of those rather shallow lugs and the flat case back, but it does still feel very secure, and doesn't feel like it's going to bump on anything, which uh, is always a, a benefit whilst the bezel is easy to manipulate whilst on the wrist.
But this watch's real piece de resistance is its visibility and legibility in the dark. And as you can see, this is how the watch appears when you go in from, uh, from a, a sunny day, and you're, uh, you're presented with the watch in the dark. Now, it has a combination of two types of superluminova, with C3 being used on the, um, the, the main hands and also on those sunken elements of the dial, whilst BGW9 is used on those, um, those sections around the edge of the dial and on the second hand. And as you can see, the, uh, the brightness of it is extremely strong. Um, the, the BGW9 is noticeably less bright than the C3, but the sheer amount which has been applied to this watch means that it's still very, very legible several hours into the night. And so I've seen this watch last uh, over eight hours, which is, is really an excellent level for this watch to be at, and certainly competes extremely well with Seiko for the, um, the, the quality of Loom. And so I really am amazed to see them be able to offer this for this price. And especially on these no-date versions, you get an extremely clear application at six o'clock too, which is a nice touch. Then, of course, one has a fully loomed bezel, which, as you can see, is very, very highly, highly loomed and very highly legible, whilst also being very clear once you've lined it up with, uh, with a uh, hand. And, of course, the divisions which are present in the hand, such as that, that minute hand, allow the whole watch to, to become more legible. And so, certainly, from a loom perspective, this really, what, this really is a triumph. And so, really, in conclusion, I think all I can say about this watch is that it offers incredible value, and that I really agree with what everyone else has said about this watch, that it is just an incredible package as a whole. The watch itself is very, very well made, offers a very good movement, the finishing is superb, and the loom is, uh, is, is, is really an incredible piece. And so, in general, this really does make a, uh, a new benchmark for what a watch can do for this sort of, uh, this sort of uh, cost. And so do tell me what you think in the comments down below of, uh, about this watch and, and of my review in general. And if you did enjoy the video, then do please like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and also to be able to see more videos and content here in the future. So thank you very much for watching. This is Zama the Watch Guy, out.